We are Kyle <laughs> Talk. Welcome into the show. I'm Matt Thomas. With me as always, we got Kyle Winnie, Trent Williams, Kyle Schumann. Um, had a good Christmas, had a good New Year's. 241 days till Penn State kicks off against West Virginia. Am I missing something? Oh, yeah, we won the Rose Bowl. That was pretty cool. Hey. <laughs> Trent, hey, it's 2023 and already went to more games than Matt, so... Oh, you know what? <laughs> yeah. he's, he's been yeah. saving that one up for at least hey, that's, that's, been, yeah. he, he, that's, that's that's probably been, what he worked on on the flight that's been my all time. the way over and back so. oh, I, had, I had a lot of time because of travel delays yesterday but we can get, get into that <laughs> yeah i just can't wait for uh coco to put on his tombstone went to the 2023 rose bowl because it doesn't sound like he's got much else but um anyway it. trent coco give us the in-person point of view for a few minutes here before we get going into the game i mean trip was awesome you you couldn't have similar to auburn where it's like you couldn't have scripted a better trip it was very similar in that regard like i think me and kyle need to start traveling more often because good things tend to happen when we're at these games the, the past three games that i've been at we've won and we've won by at least 14 points so yeah yeah, no, I mean, it, it, it was awesome. So the, the trip itself, uh, the Rose Bowl, it just has that, Kyle, I don't know if you felt this way. It's hard to describe. It just has a feeling. Like, you could feel that it's special when you're there. And and unless you're there, like, it's hard to yeah, truly of, describe what it's like. There's a lot, of, there's a lot like. of fanfare, all that stuff. Like, it's a – it's a just Yeah, a cool the trip itself is atmosphere. awesome. But, like, in the game, you just feel – like, you just feel like this – this game just means more like it. it's special. Um, they do a really good job of reminding you of the history every 20 seconds, things like that. Um, the rain was a little bit of a bummer, but it's crazy. The fact that it hasn't rained since 1997 at a Rose Bowl and the year Kyle and I go, it rains. So that's, that's a little it's bit of a too lucky to me. Yeah. We didn't, we didn't get the, uh, we didn't get the nice sunset Sunny. that the Rose Bowl is known for. Yeah. It was just as nice here in central Pennsylvania. So, I mean, who needs Southern yeah. California? It's true. Yeah. So I, I will say this though, and I, this isn't a dig at Matt. The Rose bowl is just a game that after being there, I see why people say it's like, there's no, excuse, like no matter what it costs, you just got to make it work. No matter how crazy your travel plans are, like you just have to make it work to get there because it truly is like a once in a lifetime experience. I will, the next time we are there, don't I, I'm already booked. I, I don't care what I have going on. I don't care if I'm living on the street. I will find my way out to Pasadena. I think as we were saying two times before book the tickets, it's like, listen, it's like the last traditional Rose Bowl game before playoff expands and next year it's a, it's a playoff game and all that stuff. Like, let's go do it. You know, we're young. You know, screw it. Why not? And yeah. it was a great experience. And we all had some travel issues. But, but in the end, like, yeah, it was a so hell of a trip. My my plane, I had a short, a real brief forty minute layover in Vegas. Um, Mike fell, and uh, we had a we had a two hour delay in Philly. So I was gonna miss my connecting flight, but turns out there was a hundred other Penn State fans on the same flight um, with the same connecting flight in Vegas. So pretty much American Airlines had no choice but to delay the flight in Vegas for two and a half hours. So everyone else. On that Vegas flight, I was probably not too happy with Penn State fans because they had to sit in a plane two and a half hours and then just sit and wait for 100 Penn State fans to file in on the plane to go to L.A. So was, that was a little crazy. Um, got there, played some night golf. That was awesome. A little par three course. Me and Kyle tied. So I was a little disappointed in my performance there. And Yeah, I definitely <laughs> I, I blew that. I, I should have won. But only, only Trent and I can go to L.A. and – like we're there waiting for my dad and my brother to fly and we're like what are we gotta do for a few hours yeah. so we're like we're like looking up oh there's top golf and then there's and it has like a adjoining you know 10 hole par three course yeah man it was like so. a dream a dream trip we did three things we ate food we played golf and watched football it's like what more can you want and i had my own share my, my own fair share of travel issues yesterday flying back um i was supposed to leave at like 9 30 um, la time and there was just like, you know, three eighths of a inch of a piece of rubber sticking out of the engine, and um, the uh, the plane like you know they kept us on at the gate for like an hour. And then they're like, you know, we're waiting on engineers in Dallas to like confirm that we're okay to fly. Two hours later, they're like, 
oh yeah, we're, you guys can't fly this plane. So we got off three more hours later. So it was like a six hour like delay altogether. So pretty much I ended up getting back home to the airport until after midnight. I should have been there at like eight, nine, whatever it was. And yeah, I, 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 I was home. Then, I was home and Kyle was still in LA. Yeah. So that just, <laughs> that just goes to shit. And then me. on to compound it, I got to the Philly airport. My car needed to be jumped. So thank God for the Philly transit authority or public authority, whatever to jump my car. So, but yeah. I think about, I, I, I thought to myself after all that, after all that nonsense yesterday, Penn State won. One, that's literally any of these trips, no matter what happens. If I had to walk home from California, I'd just be like, oh, Penn State did win. So it's all worth it. Like it just, no matter what happens, it, everything feels worth it. Uh, one last thing we'll touch on. I, the, Ro- the Rose Bowl parade itself, it, it was honestly cooler than I thought it was going to be. So I didn't realize like how big of a deal it was until we were out there. Um, the local news was on and while we were sitting at like the hotel bar and 800,000 to a million people attend that parade. And it's like, wow, people camp out for like days before to get their spots. It is ridiculous. And Kyle, I don't even know if I told you this, but on the way home, I had a layover in Chicago. And by coincidence, there was a lady on my flight with like, rose bowl parade merchandise on like nothing rose bowl game it was just all rose bowl parade stuff i'm like so i was like oh like i was at the rose bowl parade too this and that she's a florist from canada apparently Hmm. like 90 percent of the people they volunteer to decorate these floats like obviously the companies pay um to build them and pay for everything but then like people volunteer to decorate them and um it's like hard to volunteer because so many people want to volunteer. So she's been wanting to do it. She owns two like flower shops in Canada and she flew out there. I forget what float she was on, but her float cost $500,000. And I was doing, I did a little research, like the average float costs around $300,000. They've been known up to cost up to $700,000 for a single float. So it was just crazy. I'll talk to my dad about this. It's like, it's one thing to see like the Macy's like Thanksgiving day parade, like go all that stuff on TV and stuff. But like the amount of detail that goes into these floats is absolutely crazy. Yeah. Uh, cool. like, well, that's the thing. Like I've, I've seen the Rose bowl parade on TV. So I sort of had this idea in my mind of what to expect. But then when you actually see them in person, it's like every little detail is made out of flowers of all different sorts and the size of them, they were a lot bigger than I had imagined. The Rose Bowl parade was was pretty cool. We didn't get there super early. Um, the first gate we tried to get in, it wasn't even a gate. Like we went down the first road, and they're like, "Now this part's tickets only," and it was like a hundred some dollars a ticket. It was a fortune. Right. So then we sort of just like followed the crowd, kept walking further down, and then we got you know a decent decent spot. The the last thing I want to say is the Rose Bowl. The parking. It's a majority of the parking is on a golf course. That's like right next to the Rose Bowl Stadium. So we're thinking to ourselves, like, this course is going to be like torn up or everything like that. But obviously, Cali, California yeah. weather's all good all year round. So this so this will be fine in two weeks after all this, you know, yeah. nonsense yeah. parking and tailgating stuff. Yeah, all the parking is just on the golf course, fairways, everything. The only thing that's like roped off are the greens and the bunkers. There was people parked on tee boxes. And it's like the golfer and me. Right. Hurt, it hurt to see that a little bit, but especially because they don't get rain often. So um, with the rain, I don't think they were planning for the rain on the course. The course was definitely <laughs> extremely torn up, but I'm sure they the money they have, they just fix it. I do want to give a quick shout out to a friend of the podcast, Aaron McConus, and his aggressive driving after the Rose Bowl game to get us back to the hotel and maneuvering the California traffic. Um, he's a real MVP because... Yeah, I swear it was like he was like playing like GTA in his head driving in LA. But <laughs> I was happy he got got us home. So yeah, that's some in and out and yeah after the game. Well, well and, it's probably the closest either one of you two have been to the fairway in a while. So uh that's how little you know about my yeah, game. Yeah. I don't miss the fairway. Sounds like you yeah. guys had a good date week. Kyle, Kyle, Sounds back me up here. Bad. Who's in the fairway most? Oh, I played I, I played golf with Matt before. He, he, let alone the fairway, he's not well, even on the right hole half the time. Someone needs to tell Matt that there was no senior tees at this par three just, course. So he, uh, uh, Kyle, Kyle he, he don't have to worry about it. He'll never be out there for the game. Uh, sure. He misses all the big games anyway. So, <laughs> all right. Oh, no. tra- yeah. Let's transition yeah. into the, the actual game. Enough we're, about we're, we're only going to bring up Matt not going to the game just like maybe like one or and, two more times and, until we get to the Rose Bowl again. It'll, we will yeah. forever <laughs> hold that on him until uh, we get there again. 
Guys, I have again. a mortgage. I have a family. Yeah, again, put it, put it, put it on your tombstones because you don't have anything else. But let's give you guys a break and let's actually talk about the game. Oh, so, now we upset oh, the game. The game we now were, we up, we were at. Now we upset yeah. him. Oh, oh, talking shop. I mean, oh, I've all, all, I've, that was getting all blushes and you're getting I've, all red now. I've all, I've only heard it 45 times in the last two days, so it's not old or anything at all. So, um, <laughs> anyway, so the game. Um, Probably the most significant win of the last decade. Like, I think it it's definitely top three. I think it easily kind of goes. Well, I, I, I think find significant. I mean, I don't see how this could top the 26, okay. 2016 Ohio State just propelled our program. Um, there's no saying where we'd be today. So you, that not win. Well, my argument to that is I think nobody really realized, at least I didn't realize when all that happened, that one success in college football is hard and sustained success is even harder so the last two years we've we've seen what a mess it has been we could have easily just fallen off the rails taking a step back and we we finally won that big game I agree so have, but we, like my my only argument is like this may become a bigger game we'll see how this propels the program forward but 2016 just meant so much i mean we, we were irrelevant well, for so long coming off the sanctions yet that some some programs would not have survived, and there's no saying like if we ever get to a point where we are today, where we are having these ten and two seasons, and we're having these ten and two seasons without without that 2016 win. That that still is the top for me. Um, I would have to put this second. Yeah, like we also haven't won a big game since that 2016 season, which is the only, which is I think honestly, if, uh, well, if you you're talking, you the, yeah. the Fiesta Bowl, a big win. Yeah, I mean, the Fiesta Bowl I mean, is a good, we, we beat a we good played Washington a, exactly. team. Exactly. Like, we played a very good team. Um, I I'm, do, I do let consider me, that. I'm cla- Number I'm, three. I'm, I'm classifying big wins as top ten wins, of which this is the third. So, mm-hmm. that, that. That, that's, that's where I'm coming from. And, again, I think because of what can potentially happen, I think this is ultimately going to be the bigger game. But, anyway, in terms, in terms of, of the – In terms of timing, especially, like you're saying – like yeah we, we rolling into we, next year and how you know the players that we have now and potentially the the guys we may get through the transfer portal yeah yeah but in turn in terms of the games itself um where you guys want to start what stood out oh uh, you, got, you have to start one. you have to hey, start with clifford hey, can, can i say i was gonna say that i've been giving clifford to. the I, I've, I've been giving clifford crap all year and it's been well on this podcast like i want drill r drill r drill r but like you know the thing with Clifford over his career, he's been consistently inconsistent. That's he's been hammered on every time. And I I was so happy to actually see him thrive in his last game, send out offensive MVP for the Rose Bowl. And I think he, you know, he he, he got sent out on, on his high horse as, you know, all-time league passer, touchdowns, everything. Uh, every major QB record, he tied Trace McSorley for wins, I believe I saw. So um, it was a good way to, to, to see him go out. And it was nice to see – at the end of the game, Franklin, um, it was like the, in, late in the fourth quarter there, pull him, you know, give him a standing ovation, let, let, let the crowd recognize him for all he's done for the program, and pass the torch to Drew Alar yeah. and, and all these young guys going forward. Yeah. Schumann, it, it, Schumann it, before it, Trent and Matt get involved, I want you to look in the camera and just apologize real quick to Clifford. I, oh, that. I'm not going to apologize. He's, he's been uh, consistently uh, consistent. Wow. I'm just saying he had a fantastic right. So hey, here's I'm what I'll so happy So one – Ask Kyle, I, I sort of called the shout out long before we even like were blowing them out. I said, how cool would it be if we could get like a couple scores here he did. and get it, get a lead. I'm like, I would love to see us get a lead, um, have Clifford get a curtain call, Alar come in and just like the transfer of the, the power between the two. And it did happen. So that was I think cool. I, I, I think I heard Coco Bowen when that happened. I heard <laughs> it on TV. No, no. I mean, the, the place erupted, I will say, um, And it goes back, Matt, like Matt and I were on the same page for a while on this. Like when these so many fans were trying to throw this season away after Michigan and again after Ohio State, like we have nothing left to play for. And that 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 was so many fans saying, like, get a Lauren, get a Lauren, get a Lauren. The season's over. And it's like, look where we are now. The season was not over. Like they were being it was that mob mentality that we talked about. I mean, Clifford just won the MVP of the Rose Bowl to finish with an 11 win season that the what that does for this program moving forward we're about to see but i have a feeling that it's going to propel us to a new dimension maybe get over that hump that we've been struggling to get over and i i just 
not to talk negative or anything, but like, I don't see a scenario where we are, where we are right now, if Alar played all season and not, that's not a dig against Alar, but he's a true freshman quarterback. Um, I just don't see it us in this position. It, it, it would have been first. really, it would have been really nice to see um, uh, Alar come in and throw that touchdown strike then. I thought it was a bit aggressive, but it would have definitely set the tone and the place probably would have went wild if he would have thrown that. Just to follow up, like you said, I mean, you put the spotlight on, you show the transition. If he could have hit that touchdown at the end, that would have been really crazy. I mean, like with Clifford, though, it's not even just the stats. Like, what? Yeah. Six incompletions, 279 yards. The ability to extend the play, like that that play down the field to Keandre Lambert-Smith, which you can argue is one of the turning points of the game. Like the throws he made, like that third down conversion to Theo Johnson, like obviously the touchdown throw to to Lambert Smith were amazing. But just again, and we've been saying it all year, the pre-snap stuff. Like I don't ever remember a game where he was making that many adjustments on the line, like up until the point, like right, like literally one second on the clock. And if how many times did did he make an adjustment and it ended up working out? Like that the uh, Singleton's run run was a fake adjustment. I didn't even realize that. So Saquon's run in 2016 at the Rose Bowl and this yeah. run, they were both fake, fake check with me's on the sideline. Yeah. Where you get and Utah's I, defense to shift. Exactly. I will say I did. I did not know. I did notice um, their <laughs> secondary was still looking over to the sideline. Like I did notice that watching the game. Um, Cause honestly, there was a few times in this game before that, where I felt like Utah was just paying no attention to us and we looked pretty set. And it's like, why not just snap the ball? There was a few times, you know how we throw the running uh, backs far out on the sideline. There. Like Singleton's out there. There's not a defender anywhere near him because like Utah they know knows, he, they know we weren't snapping the ball. Kid. Just snap it. He's going to outrun any cornerback there. Just let him literally run a vertical. Um, yeah. So I, I think we caught Utah doing that. So I think that play worked out perfectly when we actually caught them in the act. Well, probably got about, away with a hole, hole too. Just gotta throw that out well, there. While we're talking probably about did. uh Nick Singleton's run, did you guys see the the sky cast cover, uh, view of the run? Like it was look up on YouTube. It's really wa- really cool ahead. clip. He there was nobody like once he hits that hole, there's no one within like 15 yards of them. Like he yeah, is yeah. just like a bull of light and he's gone. It's yeah, something think, of oh, go ahead. You know, Matt. I was just gonna no, say go I think ahead. it's pretty cool that uh I mean we're talking about Clifford so much just to kind of stay on this topic. Uh I know you said about the incompletions or sorry, the um his I think 16 for 21. Some of those were just drops on the receivers. Like I know Wallace it hit him in the chest and he jumped, which I didn't think he really needed to. Uh and there was another one for sure that was just a drop, outright drop. So yeah. that and along with the long touchdowns, I think uh we didn't really hint on that either. I mean, he put his name in the record books. I mean part of an exchange and then part of a throw as well which i think is yeah. awesome for him well that, i was gonna that, move up i was gonna go ahead no, i was gonna say <laughs> a singleton run for me probably ranks third in like most memorable plays i've seen in person 2016 kick probably has to be the f- field goal block has to be one for some reason for me personally the saquon wheel route in the big 10 championship just i re- remember that like it was yesterday and then it's this singleton run like that <laughs> for, for me when, it, for me it's actually Clifford getting hit in the Auburn game. I was like the biggest that I've seen. Of, of course, of course. Oh, no, 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 no. You were, you were, no, you were no, yelling, stay no, down, no. stay down. Yeah. 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 Big, I mean, they pop right back up. Like, yeah, it yeah. happened. Yeah. But like <laughs> the moment he seen the moment the fans saw that hole, the place erupted. Like he didn't need to get a lead. Penn State fans erupted because like you just knew no one was catching him. That guy was gone. Well. Well, to mesh these two topics together, you've got two of the longest plays in Rose Bowl history. That run is what the third longest. The pass is the longest touchdown in Rose Bowl history. Just like I just want to touch on how unbelievably successful we were on third down. Like the percentage was not that high above our, our season average. What we're always like in the 40s, we were 54 percent. But 288 yards of 248 yards on third down, three touchdowns on third down, like it's insane. Like that, you want to you want to Josh Pate padlock stat like padlock stat, unbelievable. Yeah, um, on, I mean, on a on a Utah defense that was stout all yeah, season against that was like everybody had defense against the yeah. run. Like no one no one running the ball against Utah at all this year, and we had a <laughs> huge. I, I, I will say I I think Utah was as physical as advertised. I, they were physical. I, I just their athleticism. I don't think matched our athleticism. That was a game where 
our athleticism could overcome their physicality. And I mean, that's those big plays. A lot of like, it's a result of a few things. The athleticism is one of it. One, once they made a mistake, they couldn't recover. And there were a few times where our, our O-line broke down a bit and like Clifford was under pressure, but like, again, like how much do you chalk up to our O-line versus Utah has been doing that all year. Like you, you, got, you got to give them more the credit to do against their, their front seven is. Yeah. You know. And, and a banged up O-line just to jump yeah. back to what you said, Coke. like, yeah, we ran. It's what the offense missed last year with the running game. Cause honestly you take away that 87 yard run. Like we didn't, we weren't pounding it consistently down their throats. Like you're you got like what, maybe 60 total rushing yards at that point, but it's the ability to break that one game changing play. And literally that was it. Cause as soon as Singleton crossed the, the goal line, we never looked back. Um, other thing I want to touch on on offense before we move on to defense and try to get keep this episode short. Um, just again, looking forward to next year, the young talent. You had four of the five touchdowns scored by either a freshman or a sophomore. You had 419 of the total yards of the 448 total yards from freshmen or sophomores. So, like, this offense next year, like, if Drew Alar is even anywhere close to what people expect him to be, like, look out. It, it's yeah. going to be crazy. Yeah, and like if you listen to any of the uh, post game coverage of like you know whether it's Herb Street's analysis of the post game or even um, Josh Payton touched on it, like Joel Clatt, they all touch on just like how good this season was, but how our young players are our best players, and that's something as like fans like we are, um, we've been saying that all season long. That's nothing. That's nothing new to us. We've been saying that all season. The reason like this team is so promising is because our young guys seem to be some of our best players um so it's cool that nationally they're getting the recognition they deserve outside of you know like i said outside of the national champion and maybe florida state like top three momentum programs going into the next year like it, it's gonna be i again i said it already 241 days to west virginia i can't wait um anything else on the offense before we switch over to defense um last no. thing i want to just touch on quick though uh, i haven't really i mean done too much of a comparison the last year for clifford but overall for the season and even in the rose bowl you saw uh the motion that we used i mean just a lot of movement of our receivers and our tight ends and stuff i thought was huge i think that that really gave him um a, I, a better view yeah. of what they what, what he was going I, against i think we finally saw on monday night what this offense can look like when you have a quarterback that's operating at his max potential. Yeah. Even though like a large potential might be, you know, however many grades above Clifford, like you actually saw what the offense can be like when a quarterback is operating it to the best of his ability. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, yeah. And since you touched on the screen, uh, I mean, the wing T was awesome. Like fine, cool. fine. Get, getting, right. getting both Singleton and, uh, and uh, Katron out there at the same time. And that wing T formation, it's just so cool to see that. And it, it worked twice. My my dad was so big. And he even made the comment. He said that uh, he'd love for us to have a fullback next year. He thought that would be that would be great. Well, hey, Dom, he just said with that lead block, he said it, it's Brent, Brent Strange is how... pretty much – he pretty much is listen, a fullback. Listen, Dom, Dom yeah, Luca got – but he's gone. So. Dom Luca got put on scholarship. Yeah. So let's throw him out fullback a few plays and let him go. I was going to say – Fullback to yeah. position, you could throw a tight end out there. You could throw a linebacker you out can. there. You could you could you throw can a lot of tight position. end. That's my yeah. favorite. You could even use another lineman if you wanted as a lead block. I mean, you got options. My fair part of the Rose Bowl was finding out Don Luca got put on scholarship. So, must have answer. That was after. So, um, all right, all right. Defense. We're moving on. Um. All right. So let's just jump in, address the elephant in the room. How much of a factor do you think Cam Rising going out impacted what happened? You can't you can't sit here and say there was no effect, but there there was no they weren't winning that game with or without Cam Rising. It was what eight for twenty one when he went out. Like he he was special on his feet. He was <laughs> yeah, way he more loose with his legs. Um, yeah. When when their backup came in, the pr- like everyone's saying, well, the pressure started getting home. I think that's easy to say because like the pressure really didn't start getting home until he was in the game. And I think a lot of that is cam rising made our pressure look like it wasn't getting home, even though we were there Uh, chop chop had some, you know, some plays where, and this is not like chop where he's just in the backfield instantly and just misses the quarterback. And again, I give cam rising a lot of credit for that because um, 
that those exact same plays when the backup was in resulted in a sack. I, th- I think we made the point um, in our previous episode that, you know, with the few weeks off between the Michigan State game and this game, you know, it, it's talking going to be as Chris. But I think you, you noticed that on a few plays where, you know, I, I feel like this season we were a pretty good sound tackling tackling team or, or, or group tackling team. And I, I remember one play specifically where, um, they're they're running back. I think they were like the thirty or twenty yard line wherever they were, and Elton had the guy for like a, a yard or two yard loss, and he just hit like Elton with this like this nasty spin move and went in for the touchdown. But like, it's just one of those things where like you've been off for three weeks. Yeah, and... yeah there there is no one in the Skookle League that could have done that to Tyler Elton. But um, I mean, but honestly though, like it's one of those again where you get kind of distorted proportion of how the game was going. We only allowed forty yards in the first quarter like the second quarter yeah obviously their offense started clicking a little bit 275 yard touchdown drives but then i think you get that sack at the end of the first half and i think that's where you start, kind of start to feel the momentum turning a little bit yeah utah yeah. was putting together a good drive but jacobs gets another yeah. sack on that reverse pass that they yeah. know where so and th- like th- that's exactly. where the game changed right there U- utah was driving right down the field effortlessly on that drive. They were driving right down effortlessly. They're at what the 35. I think they got the ball to um, it was first and 10 and they, they tried to run a click that trick play lost 10 yards. And yeah. I think they went in completion and completion. So they went from first and 10 on the 35 driving nicely to next thing, you know, they're looking at third and 20 have to punt. And that's when Singleton had that breakout run. And you just, you know, you felt the game was over from there. Um, being in person, I want it. Me and me and Kyle were like, you felt inside this game's over, but we're like, oh, we've seen this play out before. We need it. We need we've a seen, few more. Like we've seen this. We've seen this we, movie we, one too many times. We have seen it play out before, so I think we were cautiously <laughs> optimistic. Um, but it, it felt then and there the game was over. So I, I just to talk about the defense again. I mean, I think like Kyle had said, the tackling was really poor, especially in the first half, and. Like as expected. I mean, I think the second half they turned it around, which I think would have changed the, the course of the game as well. And not to mention, I thought that we were starting to utilize a spy and Abdul Carter a little bit more, um, which was also going to benefit and, yeah. you know, for them, hurt them um, with, with Cam Rising's legs. So, well, and what was, what was really hurting in the first half, we, we talked about our offense using motion like they were using so much motion in the running game, like back and forth across the line of scrimmage and then pulling guards. And like, it was the same thing as the Michigan game where we just didn't have a a recipe for that. But I think we did kind of fix that in the second half. 70 rushing yards in the second half. And it's probably like where Utah, Utah had what three weeks to prepare for us. So they went back to that Michigan game. Like what, what beat us? Bunch of motion, bunch of like hard nose, like, you know, runs, whatever. And, you know, we, we, we we actually Franklin made adjustments, which we would have right. in the preseason were like, can Franklin make adjustments? And many many has made adjustments. Yeah. True. Many, I, like yeah. at ha- at halftime, I felt like this was gonna be a classic game. I said I turned it and said to Aaron, I'm like, I feel like this is just gonna be one of them games, comes down to the last second, and we we're gonna be on the winning side, and it's gonna be one of the greatest games we've ever been to or we're gonna be in, on the losing side. It's gonna be a miserable trip home. And Aaron's like, well, at this point, I think it's whatever team makes the better adjustments. I'm like, oh, I don't like hearing oh. that. <laughs> like that's not what I want. That's not what I wanted to hear. But I will say too, um, I thought a huge turning point, and not even a turning point, but a momentum builder was that Cam Rising interception that we turned around and got points off of. Um, whenever yep. you can, whenever you can get points off an interception. It's always huge. Turnovers, as we know, are huge. It's just that whole momentum thing. Our offense was stagnant, and then we got that turnover, and boom, run right down the score. Got our first points on the board. Um, got in the rhythm. I thought I remember someone telling me earlier in the season that points off turnovers don't matter that much. But uh, going back to the halftime adjustments, it's again, it's just those incremental things that you want to talk about in a season of improving on something that you failed at before. It's something you're looking at next year. You, you know, this is a team that keeps learning, that keeps building upon these experiences. And I think it's going to be, it's going to be a fun 2023 yeah. starting off with the Rose Bowl on so, January 2nd. Yeah. So any closing thoughts on the Rose Bowl before we move on here? I think one last, one last oh. thing I want to hint at real quick, just talking about defensively. Um, was there anything that you guys were kind of like, or individual that you were kind of disappointed in or anything as well? I mean, I know we kind of, 
talked a little bit. We scrutinized the offense a little bit here and there, but for me, Abdul Carter, I mean, I look at the stats and I see the one tackle and to me, I felt like he was way more involved. So seeing that, I mean, not saying he didn't do his job or anything, but I guess I expected more. I, and I, I know there I, was the one corner pass that he hesitated. Yeah. Uh, I, I, but... I think it, so two things, Winnie, I think that goes along with one, we've seen his dominance come through later in the season. So if you're Utah, right. Abdul Carter's probably not used to teams scheming against him where he's become a force to the point where teams know teams are like prepared for him specifically. Um, and then two, I think schematically it's tough to tell sometimes, right? Cause there, we were definitely using him as a spy at times, a quarterback spy. Um, he was in coverage a good bit. He got beat in coverage on the touchdown throw. Like he was dropping back in coverage a lot. So I think it's, you know, you're not always just, you know, chasing ball as, as a linebacker. So I think that yeah. had part of it too. We were using his athletic ability to um, help out in other parts of the field. Right. Yeah. And, and I, I think, think it's, go ahead, Kirk. I'll well, look well, something up. Well, I was going to say um, we highlighted, you know, Clifford as a uh, offensive MVP, but you know, Jair Brown had a, had a nice game there. What eight tackles he had a, he had a interception. Sa- interception and a sack or like one and a half sacks or whatever. Sacks, so we, yeah. He had a good, he had a good way to send off his career as well. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, like I to just kind of close it on Winnie Sutts. I think we've seen it the even the second half of the year when the defense is dominating. It's one of those things where everyone is involved, so you're not, no one necessarily stands out. Like Tiggs yeah. definitely stood out, but like eight tackles, then Elton has six. Like you, I never would have guessed that Elton had six tackles, and yeah. then you have a you have a cluster of players with five, four, three. So it's just like it's it's spread across so i don't think that's why you see any player that's just like oh wow yeah, I, I think it's, you know, it's, it's going to continue next season with like trying to hit that people are going to be looking like oh the old line is going to be shifting to abdul Carter. they're going to be making sure everyone knows where he is at all times and that's because chances for other people to step up because if abdul Carter is getting double teamed somewhere well you know, these isaac or whoever you know yeah. can make can go make a play then well, yeah. one well, one closing note I had on the game was we've had about four one closing notes. Yeah, so I, I didn't have a single one because everyone's got to get theirs. Matt asked for closing. <laughs> Matt, asked for closing. <laughs> Matt asked for closing. I didn't have a single one yet. Um, I thought this was the first big game in a while where I felt like we outcoached the opposing team. Um, props to Franklin. I think he needed this win just as much as anyone. Uh, I'm sure this is a big confidence boost for him moving forward as well, but. I really do feel like we outcoached Utah in this game, and that's not something we've been able to say a lot over Franklin's tenure in these big games. Hey, those coordinators, yeah. keep them home. Pay the I mean, assistants, keep them home. Throw the yeah. bag. Like you said, yeah. the adjustments were huge. I mean, early on, they were playing the RPO really tough against us, and they were reading it well when we tried to keep it. You saw that linebacker kind of flush out and make the, you know, make the play against Clifford. But uh, like you said, I think adjustments and coaching was solid. All right, I'm moving on. Pick Thanks. and plate, national championship edition. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, oh, what? I was gonna say I wish we were gonna have a full Big Ten championship game, but it's gonna be Georgia and TCU. Matt has no it. loyalty. Screw the Big Ten. The uh, only thing it's good for is that commercial. Oh yeah. the map one. Yeah. So we're gonna go quick here. Uh just to just to remind you guys, we had three preseason bets of Penn State to average 27 and a half over under 27 and a half points per game this year on offense that actually went over um, our defense to allow over under 19.2 points per game, which I thought was like a high, which was high from last year. We were a great defense last year. We actually allowed less that than this year. So we all missed on that one. We all think that our defense was going to take a step back this year Took a step four with points per game or opponents points per game. And Clifford over under 3,400 passing yards. He went under that for this year. Um, and then the rest of the, f- from last week with our uh, bowl records overall, uh, six and three for me, five and four for Trent, seven and two for Matt, six and three for Woody, which brings our total podcast aggregate to 210, 162, and eight. And I'm still in first place. Yeah, for now, until yeah. until uh, good old John does the uh, okay. audit. That's the, uh, they're going to need a full, a full firm to do that audit. Wow. Good thing yeah. you work at one. Yeah. It's scary, but are, are right, you going to continue your work. segment? Yeah. Oh, we're going to do the oh, pick the actual game. That'd be important. So, oh. 
Wow. National championship game. Well, we have TCU in Georgia. Uh, TCU is under, so Georgia's fair by 12. And the over under for the game is, we just had it up here, 62 and a half. So do you guys want to pick that a while? When you want to go first on that? Oh, please. Well, um, well, you know he's going over. So just put that down. Yeah, please do the over. The over is down for Winnie. I already have it down. Thank you. I, I don't know. I was back and forth. Um, TCU, I'm trying to just think back here. TCU, I, I was a little surprised. I thought Michigan would would have kind of walked over them a little bit more. And then I would have thought the opposite, where Georgia would have had a better um, – handled Ohio State uh, a little bit more than they did. But uh, I don't know. I'm going to go with TCU in this. I, I think that they would definitely cover. I mean, 12 points seems to be a lot. And I know Trent, you and Matt were kind of a little bit more high on Ohio State, as I wasn't. But uh, I didn't really – wasn't all that impressed with Georgia, I should say. Yeah, I, I don't think it was much of a lack of Georgia being good as it was Ohio State played extremely Ohio well. C, CJ, up, for sure. But CJ Stroud is going to play like that. Um, they could play with anyone in the country. But besides that, 12 points is a lot for a championship game. And as much as as many points as that is, I just I think uh, Georgia pummels them. I just think we're setting up like it's been a great bowl season. The playoff games were great. Everything was great. And I think it's just going to be a blowout national championship. That's just like boring. Um, so with that, I'm taking Georgia to cover. And I like the over because I do think TCU is going to put up some points. Um, Georgia's not invincible. But uh, so with that, I, I like the over. Matt? Yeah, I mean, you'd think that TCU would just kind of flop here. That's what you would kind of expect the end of the magical run, but everyone kind of thought that last time too, and they went out and handled Michigan. So I'm going to – I don't think they win. I'm going to say they keep it within that 12 points though, so they cover uh, and over as well. So I think it's going to be a shootout. You know, Georgia struggled a little bit with CJ Stroud running. I think Max Duggan does that a little bit more uh, than Stroud wants to, so I think that's going to be an issue for the, the dogs' defense. Yeah, I'm going to go Matt and Winnie. I think 12 points is too much. And the fact that TCU was able to hang with hang with Michigan, I think is, you know, neck and neck with, with Georgia for the best team in the country. Um, we saw that firsthand from from us this year. Uh, so I think TCU does cover. I don't think they're going to win. I think they keep within the 12. And I'll go over. Why the hell not? Oh, All right. Got to roll with those horned frogs, you know. What they do, like Hypno- this or whatever? Hypnotoad. Yeah. Hypnotoad. Hypnotoad. Yeah. <laughs> All right, rapid fire, last call. Trent, go. All right, so um, rumors are swirling that Harbaugh is leaving. Um, CJ Stroud is going to the draft. This stuff all happens. Does Penn State at any point yes. become the favorite to win the Big Ten next year? If, if Harbaugh leaves and CJ Stroud leaves. It's – I still think Ohio State's gonna be the favorite next year, even though Stroud's lo- Stroud's leaving. You still have they have all those receivers coming back next year. So I, I, let's, yeah. let's piece it out. So even if Harbaugh doesn't leave, do you still think Michigan, you know, is better than no? No, I, I, than I think State? that that's a tough transition because Harbaugh Harbaugh's coaching mentality and style that he he, he plays a system right that ninety percent of coaches don't play. So when you're recruiting to that system, it's great, but that transition out of that system is not going to be an easy one. So unless they fill that role with a coach that's playing hardball system, I don't think those recruits will play as well to um, a new head coach. So with that, I don't think Michigan will be as good um, with hardball leaving. And Ohio state. I mean, I just think we play Ohio state. Well, we can't seem to get over that hump, but we play it well. And they, I, they just don't seem to have that, um, that, that, backfill of talent that they've had in years past where it's like next man up is the next great thing every single time. Yeah. yeah their their core going to be unproven next year, but again, they're getting born on third base with all that skill position talent coming back for Ohio state. So. All right. Horrible. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't think we ever become the outright favorite, but we are definitely regardless of what happens, going to be the trendy dark horse. So. Yeah. Absolutely. And my, my last call was going to be, I'm like, it's not even a question. If we beat Ohio State and we go into that Michigan game, Michigan game undefeated, is it the biggest game in Penn State history? Like going into it, yeah, it has to be yeah. right. That, that was going to be my last call. I'm like, but if, if we're undefeated going into that Michigan game, there's no way that's not the biggest game uh, in program history. Trent, I'll, I'll ask my 
my question kind of piggyback backs off here. So this is again, like we all sort of know the schedule for next year. We all, we're all looking ahead. Obviously we're all optimistic without doing, you know, any other like research, whatever we think our record is next year. Everyone goes and gives a quick record right now. Obviously we'll do predictions next year, but what's our 11, 11 and one. I had, I had 11 and one. Oh, 11 and one. We, we finally beat one of the two. We don't get them both. I wish it was almost switched because I feel like, I mean, the last couple of years, maybe the last 10 years, I almost feel like we traded off with Michigan. Like they beat us at their home field. We beat them when we're home against them. Ohio State, I feel like it's a tough one. Um, I don't know. I, I want to say maybe we go undefeated. I think yeah. especially if Harbaugh, if Harbaugh leaves, like Trent said, I feel like the system's going to be hard to to work around, especially if they don't. I mean, I doubt they would hire with him. They'd so, look for somebody else. But he, Ohio State, if we could really, I mean – perform by that point in time here's where at least here's where i'm a little bit um a little bit slow to like fully dive in um we it's very different going into a season with these expectations next year it's very different for the coaching staff it's very different for the players your entire mentality is different um every team's giving you your their absolute best you're looked at differently by everyone that being said, um, we sort of had this transition in the 2016, 2017 year where that we had those expectations for 2017. Um, we all say it should have been a playoff caliber team and we fell short. Um, I do think James Franklin has come a long way from a head as a head coach though, since then. So. Yeah. And I mean, there are, there are questions. We can get into that later. There are questions, offensive line, defensive line, you know, Drew Lahr still has to prove himself, but I think, I think there could be something special next year. Although maybe I'll hedge just for good luck and say four nine and three. Do you, yeah. do you think that, that it's better that the Ohio State games later in the season at the least? I mean, do you think that gives us a better chance? Or like, if it was the, I mean, early first, um, first Big Ten game of the year for us, do you think that's more of a challenge? I mean, again, it just like it mat like it's six in one hand, half a dozen in the other like new injuries versus experience. Like you just, all you can do is you just play the game on the day that it's played and you just have to make the best of it. So I'm just glad our, I'm just glad UMass is after our bye week. How how fitting, how fitting would it be? Matt, Matt and Kyle season tickets their whole life. I've been going to games my whole life. Winnie's first year is the season ticket holder and we go to the playoffs. Like (laughs) I think it's a sign that I'm the, well, I mean, he he went to more than, two games this year and we won 10 or 11 so i mean there you go so all right i said rapid last call we're now dragging too long go 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 i just asked mine yeah he just did oh did you oh oh am i the only one that actual record i'll go oh yeah do that i want to say 11 and 1 i just think we get tripped off somewhere it's like one of those things for like they get the whole expectation lose to you mass the whole expectation where like something happens and I thought we were going to get tripped up a game this year. That's why game for game, I said well, 10 that, and, and 2. And that's, I'm like, oh, right, but and, we'll get and, tripped and exactly up somewhere. Why, we did it. This is the first year that and that's, we did and not that's get exactly tripped why, up. Like, that's a sign of a growth within a within a team is you beat the teams you're supposed to beat. And that's why I'm, I'm hesitant to go 10 and 2. Screw it. 11 and 1. That's good. Final answer. All right. Winnie, what's your last call question? Um, So we're talking about Harbaugh leaving. It got me thinking if you, not Franklin necessarily, but would you guys rather lose Yurcich or would you rather lose Diaz? I mean, which do you think would be more impactful to the season next year if one of them were to leave? Diaz. That's a great question. You need it? I, I, I think I have to go Yurcich. Okay. I, I, I would almost say Yurcich too. I, I feel like. Wait, what would you rather lose or rather? Keep? I, okay, uh, I maybe. would rather lose who would you keep? Manny who would Diaz. You, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was saying too. Okay. Oh, so you'd rather yeah. lose Manny Diaz. Yeah. Yes. For the sole I, reason of you, you need Drew Allard to no, reach his full potential. That's exactly. That's exactly. That's that's that. That's and what, what Matt that's said, fair. like that offense is a glimpse of what it could look like with a, a well playing yeah. quarterback. For that reason, I think we need your such. Um, Penn State defense, man, we're it's just what we do, right? We, we've I, been a defensive I, program for I, a while. I think it's an easier role to fill in. I yeah, that's that. what I was going to say. You can recruit yeah. someone big to come take that job. That's fair. So. Um, all right. Am I up? Yep. Let's get this You're done. Penn, Penn State basketball in four minutes. So, uh, I can't take credit for this. I saw it on Twitter today, but who do you think would win 2016 team versus 2020 team? It, it has to be the 2016 team. I mean, 
that that team just had the it just had the it factor when when they were down i just felt they were coming back i don't know our 2020 uh, defense was nasty well all right Michael is, is it is it is it the first few games of the season or the end of the season <laughs> <laughs> final form final form average of the final four final, final I mean, form journey, i gotta take journey that. brown with journey brown our offense was moving in at the end of that season too both old lines I, were still questionable. I, I think this offensive line was maybe a little bit better than the, the 2016, though. I, I think I, Saquon and I'm, I'm going yeah, for freaks. I, I think you got to go 2022. Like I think it just it's a deeper team. It's a more well-rounded team, and I think it is. End, that, I that just think wins out. 2016 team had that it factor. They just found a way coming down the stretch. They just found a way to win, and I'm, they did it time after time. I, I'll bring in an element that I think the coach, I think Franklin as a coach and even like the ad- adjustments were huge. Like we just talked about against Utah. I think the 2016 team still didn't do a great job adjusting where this 2022 team is way Wait, better. Matt, you said the 2020 team, not 2022, did you? Or you say 2020? Oh, yeah. you I, meant tw- 2022, I, meant tw- right? I meant 2022. If I oh. said, if I, yeah. if I, if I said that wrong, no, I, I did not want, I did not want to have a competition between the team that went four and five. <laughs> And <laughs> I'm about to say, I, I, I thought I, I thought you're referring to the team that went to the Cotton Bowl. Versus, no, no, uh, no, no, no. I was talking about this I, team. That's, versus why, that's why I said Micah Parsons because I thought that that's what uh, you're referring to. I was gonna let you slide on Journey Brown too. Uh, I think this is a good time to wrap it up. You know, Matt, we're tailgate talk. Let, let's hear it. Yeah. All right. So uh, we're tailgate talk. Hopefully, we're gonna stop with mentioning that I didn't go to the Rose Bowl in the next episode. Um, <laughs> you better hope we get there next year. You better hope that's our bowl game next year right. and you go. Wait, oh, Matt, I want a final yeah. answer. If we go to a playoff or New Year's Six Bowl, will you go to it? If we go to the playoff, I'm going. I'll make that happen, which is why right. I was – which is why which is why I was hedging for this year because I was like, all right, let's – if I got to pick one or the other, let's maybe pick the bigger game. So. Why don't you go to both? Because I have a mortgage, Coco. We went over this. If it was 2052, oh. it would be a different story. But all right, we are tailgate talk. Let's go Penn State. Let's go beat Michigan. Until next time. Rose Bowl champions.